Everybody on the trip got sunburned. That was the gag. Don't say yes to the deal then. Be authentic. Don't say yes to the dress. <laughs> kiss the band. Band. The. Yeah. <laughs> Not kiss nails. Not kiss yeah. nails, girl. Cop. Like, I hate gold yeah. eyeshadow on me. I think it looks so awful. Anything when you're on your knees is going to make you look cheap. I have it on, too. It's not doing the same thing. You haven't complimented me once. Anyway, we... <laughs> <laughs> power grip mascara, power grip eyeliner, power grip douche. Power wash. <laughs> <laughs> You and your little teacup. I need a your little fairy. I know. You already made poofy. fun of my tea. I need it to are you, be. Are you cold? I was freezing, but okay. I need it to be zen in here today. So okay. cut the shit. <laughs> no, between that and the candle, I need it to be zen today. I get it. I get it. Because I'm on the brink. I'm teetering. Okay. Uh, this could go one of two ways. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. Yeah. I so, think I'm there right. Yeah, because you know what it is? What? Let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like sometimes, in general, mm -hmm. people are not as, um, how should I put this? Intelligent. Intelligent <laughs> or maybe mindful of how other people might be feeling. Oh, completely. So then they drive other people crazy because as long as their shit's handled, they're going to drive everybody else insane. So, oh, absolutely. So it's like, oh, yeah, it's okay. I'm struggling, but you're making my life a living hell by the choices you're making. Mm -hmm. So... That's where I'm at. How about you, girl? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love yeah. it. And if you could decode that, you win a prize. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, exactly. I just, I feel today was one of the, we had such beautiful weather the past couple of days. Now it's disgusting. Yeah. And I'm on Cold, that brink. rainy. Yes, yeah. so I'm on that brink of fight or flight. So I, I'm just trying to keep it, I'm trying to keep it together. Well, you're here and you have clothes on. I and have clothes on. I needed you, soft pants. You have, yeah. I couldn't be Sensories. no hard pants. Yeah. Sensory. <laughs> no hard pants. No, um, mama. You have a can. Listen, this candle smells beautiful. It is. What is it? It's the nest. nest. I'm, I don't want to touch it. I'm not <laughs> lifting it up to check it. I'm not. Well, at some point we'll tell you. I think it's the lavender something. Okay, we're going to do really, this It's really, really beautiful. <laughs> As you knock over your lip gloss. Mm, girl, open flames in the yeah. studio. Not a good idea. It is the cedar leaf and lavender. Wow. Nice. It it's beautiful. beautiful. On today's docket, we are talking about another brand trip, Mama. The Kosas brand trip was wiling out with Nick Cannon. Yeah. Uh, we are talking about going viral on TikTok for the first time. And not us, not me, not you, the pod. Beautiful <clears throat> and bothered family. We went viral on TikTok for the very first time. Some of you might have been there. And it was fucking petrifying. <laughs> so uh, there's that. Yeah, we'll talk about that. And then we have a Jagunda purchaser pass where yeah. we are trying out a decent amount of the products. Or I've received it and we've swatched yeah. it. We've played with or it. Or things from previous purchaser pass that we've talked about. We're going to yes. update you on. There's one product in particular. Mm -hmm. And um, then uh, tell people about this lip gloss because you're right. It You look, well, first of all, you're tan. I'm tan. Because let's, you're going to Aruba. Let's get it out, let's let's get get it out, out, of, out of the way. way. <laughs> you're tan. <laughs> I'm tan. I wanted to be tan before I went away. So I'm going to Aruba for a family wedding. Yes. So I wanted to make sure that I was like getting a base color before yeah. because the color that I'm wearing, I need to be tan for mm -hmm. so i was like let me make sure that's all you is it know. the suit you wore to my wedding it is yes okay. so i'm gonna that is i've been photographed in it but i'm gonna wear it again. i know well that's what i was like debating it was like do i wear this again to a wedding because it feels so special that i wore it to yours and i'm like i don't want to wear this for another like significant yes. event because it's like mm, no yes so i am gonna wear it again um because it's like more you know vacationy yeah um but this you know, I needed to be tan for it. And I'm going to say this out right. loud so okay. I don't forget it. Yeah. I just had an idea. Should we do a makeup police on ourselves? A whole makeup police episode of past makeup looks we've done? <laughs> Can you, are you not emotionally ready for that? Maybe not, Maybe the idea of it right now isn't <laughs> suitable. I'm surprised you. After I just said, I'm like, I'm on the you're brink. devious. I'm like, should we devious? rip ourselves to shreds? Devious. Why does that not feel like a real word? My <laughs> neck started throbbing immediately. I'm like, maybe I got a cool on the caffeine. Yeah, yeah. Um, devious. Yeah, devious. With a V, yeah. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, devious. Yeah. It doesn't, anyway. Okay, well, that's, let us know what you think. That's a ho horrible thing to bring up right now. I know, in the sorry. state that we're in. Sorry. As you drink your tea, I hope it's fucking nice. Mm -hmm. Is it chamomile? It's very good. It's like an orange thing. Oh, orange yeah. leaf? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Orange leaf. How long oh, do you have to steep orange it? Orange leaves? Was that? 
we painted our master bedroom. <gasps> Get ready. Oh, the home content's coming, guys. It's Listen, amazing. It's I'm so not good. kidding you. I know I bought that. We bought Casey and I bought our new house in the moved in the end of October. I'm not kidding you when I tell tell you we have not done a thing other than the studios. So okay, but who has the time? I know, girl. I barely have time to wash my ass. And you better um, <laughs> circling back before I forget. Forget the filler. Lawless. Aruba, your tan. Aruba tan. Uh, yeah, makeup for today. Serving Girl. everything. When I'm tan, I I feel I like I'm the best version of myself. Rob a bank, because <laughs> I feel like I when I, as, then I'm tan. Yeah, no makeup on. I feel cute and flirty. Yeah. When I put makeup on and when I have color on, yes. when I'm wearing a little pop of color against yeah. my tan skin God. and then some good makeup, Mama, yeah. I have to say, I don't you mess look around. Beautiful today. Thank you. So between the pastels, the tan. The hair, I... I feel like I'm turning into you. <laughs> look at the shirt. Everything. <gasps> look at that. And no, I, I so won't read you for this plaid, because this is a gay plaid. It's not Old Navy plaid. No, it's cotton candy fantasy. Absolutely. Um, and then we'll touch on it, but we both tried two different foundations, and yeah. girl, your skin looks fucking incredible. So if we end up disagreeing, I'll go get a mirror, but I don't know. And I then the lip gloss is see. like and making your Daisy lips pop. Daisy Pink, which Lawless Daisy Pink. I don't think this is a new color. Yeah. But Mama, pastel pink. I have it on too. It's not doing the same thing. <laughs> you haven't complimented me once. Anyway, we... <laughs> <laughs> Which, I said you look so cute. You did, You're dressed yeah. up today. I know. What am I wearing? Y'all. I didn't go Does to- Does that say y'all or Yale? <laughs> Yale. I it was like y'all. I Could didn't go imagine? to Yale. I'm also wearing a hat because I'm mid uh, touching up my hair. But I'm, what am I serving today? I feel like Rory Gilmore's boyfriend yeah, in Yale. Yeah. Luke. Oh, Luke. I was going to say Rory would date a gay guy, but I don't know if she would. You're serving she, Luke. She tended to date, um... Let's just say men that were they had a they had a predisposition they had they were a little emotionally abusive. Let's see, you never watched Gilmore Girls, right? Um, so it, it was interesting. My dad actually did and always had it on, and I remember, yeah, huh. my dad was like very into like Will and Grace, Gilmore Girls. Like he always had it on. He was oh. my dad was very like I swore if he like wasn't like I was like this man isn't gay but he should be because yes, like it was great, yeah. but like them would be very, yeah. Straight yeah. acting, but then it was interesting. Take you I would, fishing, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I would always turn off Gilmore Girls because it came on after Charmed. Okay, so when I would come home from school, I watch Charmed, and then Gilmore Girls would come on. And there's something about the theme song, like oh. it was ear piercing to <gasps> me, and the how fast they would talk to each other. It just like was not the gig for me. Her parents were evil. Okay, first of all, rich evil. When you Susan. watch the series in full, okay, and you get older. You realize Emily Gilmore was the most sane one out of everyone. She had oh. very high expectations and she was very, you know, from that world. So mm-hmm. her her view of the world was very fucked up in that regard. But I will say mm-hmm. she was the most um you start to actually identify like and like empathize with her. With Emily a little bit more. Yeah. Because you realize like as you get older, you're always on Lorelei and Rory's side. But then as you get older and you I st- wasn't. Even if you don't have yeah, <laughs> even if you don't have kids, you start to realize like, oh wait, as an adult, you see the way Lorelai treats Emily and you're like, oh wait. Like so it is a little and then the fast talking, maybe because I have ADHD, it was I I felt like they were they they that was the only speed. And the theme song, that theme song could bring me, is like, and if you watch Gilmore Girls and love Gilmore Girls, you know, that theme song is like my piece. I could rewatch I, Gilmore Girls. It's the most comfort, comfort show. I could see that because you know what? It was the the visuals were very, mm. in the show where like, I wanted to live in that yes. town. Where was it based out of? Was so, that like fictitious or was it, was it like Massachusetts? On, it was based on a town, the I forget the name of the town that the <laughs> creator visited in Connecticut. Okay. And it's actually like um, I want to say it's like it's not too it's not far from Hartford, Connecticut, the town it was based on. Okay. And then um they built the town from scratch, like on the Warner Brothers lot, and it was called Stars Hollow, was the fake name. But yeah, it was, it was based on a town in Connecticut. Yeah, visually, I don't know. There was something about the theme song was very Sarah McLaughlin. Oh, like, yeah. I was just like, oh my God, like, shut so- up. Yeah, yeah. And then just going right into like, just like this beat. Very, oh, yeah, God, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. do it. And then it was like, they were going to a coffee shop. I'm like, you don't need it. <laughs> yeah, well, so, yeah, that stop. was a joke. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, yeah. yeah, it was a joke. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I got to revisit it now that I'm you older would and I would appreciate older. it more. Casey watched it and was like sobbing like half the time. Like, it, it's just unbelievable. And Melissa McCarthy. <gasps> That's how she got her start. 
like I remember I watching that and I was like, whoever. And at the time I was like, this person is iconic. Yes. And I don't know who she is, but I love her. I just read Lauren Graham's book about the original Gilmore Girls and the mm-hmm. reboot when we when I rewatched it for me the ninth time, but Casey was watching it for the first time. And uh, she tells a story in the book how I think season two of the original run, Lauren Graham and Alexis Fledell went to see Melissa McCarthy in the Groundlings. And they and she said in the book, she distinctly remember them having a conversation, leaving, saying, like basically looking at each other going, do you think the world is ever going to catch on to how brilliant she is? And it was really cute. She ended the chapter in this exact word. She goes, do you think the world will ever catch on to how brilliant Melissa McCarthy is, period? I think they have, period. Like, meaning, like, what she's gone on to do. But they said it back then. They were like, this woman is not being utilized to her full potential. No, she was brilliant. And she's a brilliant, brilliant person and Mm. actress. And what a great soul. Oh. She is so... Her on I Drag mean, Race this season. Oh, so just, I, I was in tears. I know. Amazing. All right. Shall we <laughs> we really went some... on an ADHD rant there. Yeah. Should we take a break? We're going to take, we'll a, take break a break and then we're going to come back and yes. talk to you about some Kosas drama. And viral TikTok. Yes. Girl. girl. What do you want to talk about first? All right. I, I kind of want to get this Kosas thing out of the totally. way. Because I'm, it's corny because it <sighs> reminds me of another brand and it was already brought up in someone else's video about it. And yeah. Yeah. And it's it just gives full... Oh, you're afraid to say tar? We talk shit about him every week? No, but I'm just <laughs> yeah, saying, yeah. like, I think everybody at home already kind of... Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Why are we still doing it, it's this? Just, it, it's so funny that I'm not against brand trips at all. No. I'm against... Girl, it's the way it is presented to the uh, to the public uh, and i think that it's just the presentation of like and i think it's laughable that this one especially bit them in the ass on the trip yes how it unfolded that yes. this was all about the kosas sunscreen yes the brand is called kosas k-o-s-a-s we've talked about it a little bit mm-hmm. for context they went to what the bahamas or something uh something bora like bora that. i don't, I don't know. know something, something with like a that. bee some island some place sunny with water and sh- whatever i was gonna say ships um <laughs> and from what I saw every video doing the research mm-hmm. beforehand, not a single man. No surprise. It was all the, like, top-tier girl influencers that you can think of. There was a couple that I recognized that I was like, oh, good for them, whatever. But, of course, I will say, let's say the stars of the show were, of course, Michaela and Clamzilla were on the trip. Which they got initial pushback for both of them, mainly Michaela, saying, you know, if you – with Kosis, like, underneath Kosis post saying, like, you align yourself with Michaela – I'm not going to buy it anymore. Because of her being like dishonest with reviews uh, in the past. People don't trust her anymore. Yeah, yeah, because they also stitched her with a Kosas product saying it was oily and greasy. And it, oh God, like basically in her words, ripping it to shreds. And now and then fast she did forward, a paid collab with them and she was saying it was the best thing in the world. Yeah. And now fast forward, you're on the trip and clearly they're good enough to embroider your name on a bag of snacks. <laughs> yes. But. And I also don't understand because the same thing happened with Michaela when the 519 thing <sighs> happens. Because right before, and I didn't, I hadn't, this hadn't happened yet. Mm-hmm. Um, well, okay. The 519 thing happened. The video right before, fi- while 519 was happening, was her talking about the uh, got to be brow glue. Mm -hmm. And she said it was incredible. It was like the best, strongest brow glue she ever used. And I remember during the 519 thing when she went away for a couple months, that video had like millions of views, more than her normal millions, because it was like the last thing before she disappeared for a little bit. And then come, I had her on the premiere of this in January to talk about 519. Mascara Gate happened two days after we finished filming. So that was fun for me. Um, And then like two months after that, she organically is using the got to be brow and mind you the got to be brow glue that was living that i spoke about early uh earlier when 519 was happening that was paid saying it was the best thing in the world cut to two months after into the next year when she came back hated the brow glue said it was just organically picked it up showed it in a video and was like oh this is like horrible i hate it yada yada and everyone was saying like you you just posted a paid ad for them a couple months ago and said it was like the best thing you ever used. And that always blew my mind because I was like, I remember, I've been doing this two and a half years. I remember everything I ever reviewed. So I can't wrap my head around you forgetting, forgetting you talked about a product already in a positive way and then talking about it in a negative way or vice versa, A. B, especially when one of those videos is paid. <laughs> like I remember my paid collabs more than my organic post because you have to do more work. You have to send it to the brand, send of it course, back. Of course, of course. It's just on your memory more. 
How do you forget you talked about something and then I don't post? Think she did. You think she does it on purpose? It comes from a level of dishonesty and then not caring. I got the check. I don't give a shit. Yeah. That's what I think it so is. So you mean like, okay, so then when she talks about it a second time and she then That's says the real T. When she talks about it But do you it think again. it's real that she forgot she posted it or does she not oh, no. care that she- I don't think she cares. That's shocking. Because she already got the And that's the happened check. a lot. Yeah. That's she got the a lot. check. And I don't, she's not the only offender of this. I would say 80, 85% of influencers do this. They post something saying, I love this. Mm -hmm. You said it and you're like, all these people with the milk sticks, anybody that got paid for it. Yeah. You're talking about it now. It was the best thing. I want to see it in your makeup Where'd bag. Where'd go? Yeah. Where is it? Yeah. Because it's not. It's really like these exactly. products that you rave about, you're full of shit. Yeah. Whether or not it's obvious that it's an ad, I don't know. Like, don't say yes to the deal then. Be authentic. Don't say yes to the dress. <laughs> That's what it, it like hit my ear like. So I had to say it out loud. <laughs> but yeah, yes. like what the fuck? I know. Because I, I can't like with that. So you wonder why people don't find you authentic authentic and approachable yeah because they look at you like a liar the first yeah. thing they associate with your brand is that you're a scammer and a liar pretty much that's what people are going to associate you yeah. with. yeah yeah i don't know there was something even when i started to freelance for brands i said i can't work for a brand that i can't fully get behind and believe in i have to believe in it to be able to sell it i yeah. can't i'm not i I'm can't not, do that i'm not selling product that i don't believe in and fully love myself mm -hmm. so that's the thing it's like i have been approached by many brands when i was leaving sephora to like oh come freelance for yeah. us and i'm like oh no thank you i appreciate it but no thank you like yes. i respectfully decline because a I don't like your product. Totally. And I'm not going to insult you that you actually work for this brand. But it's like, when I was leaving, I reached out to people for two brands that I wanted to work for. Yes. And if they weren't hiring, then oh well. Yes. And I was very fortunate. And yes, I was very lucky. But it's like, I'm not about to sit, especially in the position that she's in. To millions of people. To millions of people where your opportunities How do you not have are- diarrhea every day? People are <laughs> banging her door down to review product- you don't have to take these brand deals. You can be choosy. I know. So shame on you then for doing this and yeah. still doing this. Because you talk about choosy. That's the funny thing. Even me, like I've been transparent with you guys that I've had two brand deals in the past seven months. <laughs> That's not to say I don't turn down because I get waterboarded with offers to promote some vacuum, some coffee maker. Like it's this, I get weird shit all the time. And I'm like, no, because this is like clearly garbage and I'm not talking about it. You're not and I'm gonna not going to review... all of a sudden pretend yeah. that this machine changed my life. Like it's not my brand. It's not what I do. Like, and I, it's just to me, brand deals, even if you do love the product to a degree inherently hurt your relationship with an audience that already is skeptical, especially on short form where I'm like, I'm not going to not only take this risk of doing something outside of my brand, but then this thing that could be cheap and bad, but then post it on a short form audience that it could be the first time people are seeing me. Yeah. And they're like, it's just this. Yeah. So anywho's, there was that with the Michaela. And then, of course, Glamzilla with the, you know, her recent stuff with she basically everyone was saying she's always positive. And then she posted an elf review of the elf. Uh, click sticky things and mm -hmm. rip them to shreds and was but and the reason people were basically saying if you find the video that she was very negative to begin with like she started the video basically saying I'm not gonna like these and she hadn't even put it on so there was a weird energy and she's always positive so people were like this seems very pointed but I think it's also a symptom of when you do share nothing but positivity and then you give a negative review it's weird and that's the thing when you spend you know when you kiss brands asses 99.999% of the time and then all of a sudden have an honest opinion it doesn't sit well with people go figure right. like and you know what i think that speaks more to like what we're doing too that we've been grown i'm the same person on and off camera uh, totally brutally honest i'm and i would you know what i'm not even brutal I'm just honest. honest. Yes, we're not I'm being just, mean. I'm not being, I'm being authentic. Like if I think this is bad, I'm going to say that's bad. Yes. And I'm, if I think, and if I think something's bad, first impression, looking at a photo of it on Purchase or Pass and I end up loving it, I'll eat my words and say, I love this. Absolutely. And let me be the first person to tell you too. I do, there are Tarte products mm -hmm. that I do love. Yeah. I mean, there are products that I fell in love with that yeah. like, do I identify with the brand image? 
they don't identify with me. <laughs> so let's that. let's pause that real quick too. Yeah, th- there have been people that have asked mm-hmm. that if I like if I would ever like work with them, and I'm like, I don't know. They don't yeah. want to work with me. They would never want to work yes. with me. And in my dreams years ago, would I have wanted to go on those brand trips? Absolutely, of course. Because there was a point where they were more. I feel like more inclusive back in the day when there was more boys in beauty. Yeah. Especially the big names. Well, they love the, let's call them the drama players. The reality exactly. show. Exactly. The reality show boys. Yeah. I yeah. wasn't on Big Brother, basically. Exactly. Equivalent, they so they, they, they don't never want liked me. regular boys in beauty. They liked Manny. Dramatic. James. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Com- uh, com- not confrontation. Uh, controversial. Controversial. Yeah. So it's like there are things that it's like there are these brands that are controversial and there are these that I want to love these products unapologetically and I will. Honestly, mm-hmm. I don't care. If I like a product, I like a product. But at the end of the day, there's just like, I don't know, behind these people that go on these brand trips that clearly don't like the brand. Yes. And then you're posting about it and you're doing whatever obli- like yes. obligation you have to post if there is one. Yes. I'm not saying that there is. But like, have some integrity. Well, you know what it is? The difference of what you're explaining to back in our, like, let's say the 2015, 2010 to 2015 days compared to now is like with the the tarts and kosis pulling this bullshit because so do to continue elaborating basically this trip and the videos of this trip were kosis like almost went out of their way to make this look like a tart brand trip there was <sighs> the gifts and the and the yachts and they were on the boats and the bikini poses and the and the were you know pouring don perignon on their fucking t- says they like just like that very that and yeah. a nowadays now more than ever in the climate we're living in like people can't uh, pay their rent genocide is happening like read the room like girl it's just it's not the gig anymore a and b do you not think you're fucking replaceable kosis and that's what i was making the point about tart like you're saying there's tart The problem with that attitude now compared to back then is back then they could pull that fuckery and there was products only they had. There was no other shape tape. Now, everything a beauty brand does, you're lucky if we can count on one hand a brand with a product that has that is something no one else has something that does the exact same thing. Oversaturation. Girl, everyone is replaceable. So the way you behave as a brand and what you stand for is kind of all your brand image is so much more important because your products are replaceable. We can't find because this whole brand was for a bronzing SPF that everyone still got sunburns. (sighs) Everybody on the trip got sunburn. That was the gag. That was so funny. I was like, everyone in the comments was like a brand trip like this for SPF and everyone getting sunburn is like the worst ad for this product you could ever imagine. If I was uh, so let's just let's put it this way. If I was Kosas. And I was like, where are we going for an SPF to make sure nobody gets a sunburn? Honey, we're going to Seattle, Washington. We're going in the woods. We're yeah. going to Seattle. The town from Rain. Twilight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Literally. We are going. Mama. Or you better believe if I was like the marketing director of Kosas, I would have been chasing them all, spraying them with SPF 100. I would have in their mouth cans of yeah. Neutrogena <laughs> SPF 100 cr- uh, missed in Katie Perry the crowd titty SPF yeah, cannons yeah, it's just literally yeah. hosing Whip them cream down can yes. SPF mama yeah yeah it's just so self indulgent like mm-hmm. and i've thought about it and i just yeah girl i don't know what to like if i ever got invited on a trip like this the brand, I, I i still even any brand trip i've ever gone on i have oh, so considered the brand and like what the brand was. And the only brand trips I've gone on were Benefit Cosmetics, Ulta Beauty, The Collective, and Rare Beauty. And it's so funny when you see the videos coming out of this Kosas trip compared to like what the Rare Beauty trip was. We were all in matching like sweatsuits and pajamas basically, going to like a cabin in the woods, sitting around a campfire, talking about like our mental health. (laughs) And then this brand trip is like, like, Girls Gone Wild. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, yeah, mama. That's what I mean. The difference. There's just, I don't know, there's more thought that goes into, like, how is this going to look? What are we really, and what's the point of what we're really doing? Okay. Kind of a thing. Because apparently no one used the SPF. So that's no. the, uh, the And yeah. again, w- like, I I will say this till the day I die. What is the end game? What yeah. is the end game? What are these trips for? Because yeah. 
your return on investment of like having these people flying everybody to a destination, spending all of this money doing all of this for a product launch. I mean, more power to you if you have the money, but what's the return on investment? What's the end game? I really think they're going after the 10 year olds with shit like this because it was so funny. I just went to Sephora the other day. It was a Sephora and Kohl's and I was, oh, I was picking up another from last week's episode, which I have no impulse control. I should have waited for the sale. I'll probably get another one. The uh, Glow Recipe Avocado Clean. Center. And I go mm-hmm. and I'm there. I'm not even kidding. It was these two sisters. One had to be 12. The other one had to be single digits. Mama, like nine. And they go over and they're pumping Drunk Elephant and then Glow Recipe. It was really funny because the 12 year old like looked at her nine year old sister. You could tell the 12 year old was like more conscious. And she was like, because the nine year old was going to pump something. And the 12 year old was like, don't do that. And the nine year old was like, it's a tester. That's what it's for. And I was just like, oh, my God. But it makes me and I really was I was like, holy fuck, like, it's really like this is serious, like in the sense of these like 10 year olds buying stuff. And that's why it's so icky to me, because it's like that kind of a marketing Mm -hmm. this Kosis trip. It's very old school, our generation of marketing of like everything back in the day, because there was no accessibility to things. And it was like when you went on TV shows and stuff, it was these people on reality shows living in those villas, like just being like that and it it was that Jessica Simpson, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera marketing era of like you wish you were us. It's expensive to be me. <laughs> yes. And that's what it's giving. Yeah. So it's almost I look at them and it makes me want to I just laugh. I feel like cringe secondhand embarrassment because in mm-hmm. 2024, like I said, amidst a genocide, your marketing strategy is to re- like pay how and how many creators has Kosis told you, mind you, in the past year that they didn't have a budget and fuck them when they did a deal with them because we don't have a budget and then just spent how much six Act figures like on this. Indie brand. Yeah, exactly. And then take the marketing strategy in 2024 amidst this, the what's going on in the world and have that attitude and portray that image of like, uh, you wish you were us. Like yeah. that. Like, but it's because I feel like that 10 year olds are more susceptible to that. They do watch, they don't watch the Michaela's and the Glamzillas through the same lens adults do. We smell the bullshit. But a 10 year old, well, you know, when you're 10, when you like someone, you idolize them, you want to be them. So when you see them living this lifestyle, that's what, they, and I'm just like, who are you? Like that attitude of that tart closest thing like girl hang it up yeah hang it up it's not the vibe anymore we went viral (laughs) girl I, mean, I it, we have such interesting perspectives because like yeah. i said this was the first time you've gone viral outside of youtube with our youtube shorts like uh-huh. on this or whatever yeah but it's a different audience girl. It's a, it was a very different perspective on because i would say like the instagram one didn't go as viral it was almost at like maybe four hundred thousand now yeah. but the reception on instagram was almost more very very combative combative and very difficult to like understand yes how that algorithm works because <laughs> who it's getting pushed to yes was not the audience and then our, <laughs> yeah. our videos were getting stitched on instagram like yeah. our like they were taking from instagram and then like stitching us and i was like oh god mm-hmm. tiktok though is where it like popped off girl um uh, we were going to dinner that night and let's talk about it after last week's episode yeah. our sephora favorites i had i think posted it before yeah we posted it downstairs came upstairs filmed did our thing and then we went to dinner yeah as I think we were we leaving? Yes. Leaving dinner. No, we were leaving here. Leaving here on the way to dinner. On and the I, way to dinner. And I said to you, I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> and it already, and it had been up for six hours. Yeah. At that point. Um, and, and it was it at had like reached like maybe. 200, 300,000. Yes. Yes. Then now we're sitting at dinner and all of a sudden. It's like 700, it's 800, 900. As we're sitting there. And it's so funny because we were, if you've seen it, uh, this to our, and it reassures me how much I love all of you (laughs) on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. It was, you guys know us so well, 99% of the time we're morons. And we post this clip was from our Lipstick Lesbians episode. And it was a clip of me saying, having the conversation about how um, I had a realization when I was 12 years old where I said, oh, you know. Uh, it dawned on me, oh, people don't hate gay men. They hate femininity. They hate Ew, women. Hearing you say that Girl, again is it. like <laughs> <laughs> triggering. <laughs> and it's so hysterical because there's so much nuance to this whole thing happening. Yeah. Long story short, over the past 
the preceding days, <laughs> that TikTok was up to is up to like 3.2 million. And let me just say this. The point I made about 99% of the time we're morons is because it was so hysterical to me that I we've I've if you're like a hardcore fan, you know I've mentioned like oh, I'm not like shorts are not the gig with the podcast. Like, and if so, it needs to just be stupid it because gets people taken don't, out of exactly. They don't get it. They don't know us, whatever. And even if it is just us being funny and stupid, that yeah. it's people telling, calling us being homophobic, saying we're, why are they wearing makeup? Like pick your poison. So I posted this because obviously the lipstick lesbians are big on social media, like TikTok and Instagram. So I knew people would know them and whatever. Mm-hmm. Post that. Okay. <laughs> did not expect it to pop off the way it did. And let me just say this. The biggest takeaway from it was a couple points. Most people, I think 99% of people on out of that 3.2 million on TikTok got it. They got it. And I will say it was actually a lot of straight women that were like kind of mind blown by it, which was, you know, funny to us because like that was what I said in the the video. I knew it when I was 12 because I'm removed from the woman experience, but I'm expressing femininity as a gay man. So I'm realizing, oh, people view anything feminine as weaker. So it's embarrassing for me to be feminine, i.e. they're going to make fun of me and be homophobic. Yeah. And I think a lot of straight women really never put that correlation together. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot. Then it almost became a trend of straight women stitching me saying that for two seconds and then cutting to them just jaw agaped being like mind blown you blew my mind so then there's even more out of context (laughs) mini clips of me saying that all over the internet and the first woman that did that her video is up to like 10 plus million so that's think about that and then the negativity was either people just saying i disagree with you but then not saying why or saying they disagreed with us and then giving other reasons why people are homophobic and don't like gay people Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. And I think the the point that really, really dug into my skin is when people said, I don't hate, I love women. And I said, no, no, no. (laughs) Yeah. I said, you're missing the point. I, because, and this is my, like, this is what really irked me. I'm like, it's not, I'm not saying you hate women as a a whole. I'm saying, but I'm I'm saying (laughs) you, (laughs) yeah. uh, You hate women because anybody that has strong feminine energy, you're threatened by. Yes. So insecure men hate strong women or strong feminine energy that comes, strong feminine energy that comes out of a gay man because they're unapologetically themselves and they're living their life as is. And strong women doing the same. I know. Biological women or trans women or gay men or anybody that has feminine energy, they're threatened by. Because if you don't fit into this like, oh, woman does woman, man does man (laughs) things. Like, it it, it makes people's minds boggle. And I'm not just saying straight men either. You know, there's there was a mixed bag of people that uh, that there, there was women, there was men. Some Everybody of the most between. negative reactions were from gay men. Yeah. Who, of course, were yes. either so funny, either blatantly <laughs> saying like, we don't hate femininity or we don't hate women. We just hate, we just hate like obnoxiously flamboyant gay men. I'm like, so you, you're exactly who I'm talking about. Literally, which <laughs> a, I'm like, okay. B, the <laughs> amount of people also saying like, uh, and, and this is the moral of the story. When you guys watch short form content, you have to realize that you're getting fed 60 seconds of something out of context. That was a two hour long conversation. It, like you said before about people's intelligence level, it shocks me that someone can watch a 60 second clip clip of someone making a singular point and digest that as you're saying that's the only reason that's shocking i was never claiming that that was the sole reason people are homophobic that is a raindrop in the ocean of reasons why people are homophobic there's millions of other reasons people hate women hate femininity hate gay men hate any lgbt person or even saying why didn't you include trans people I don't know, because again, this is a 60 second clip of a two hour conversation where in the two hour conversation, we brought up trans people many times, but it didn't make the 60 second clip. But you're more turned on by being mad and being the devil's advocate to one up me than you are to click on one link and listen to the two hour conversation to get the context for the thing you're mad about, because you're not really mad. You want to hang a trophy on your wall saying that you disproved the 60 second sentence coming out of my mouth. You don't give a fuck about being right or wrong or disproving anything. You want to win. Yeah. And that's what short form content is. And that's why it disgusts me because you never get 
the context of it. And it's so funny going back, looping callback to the Glamzilla of it all with the elf thing. That's even why I don't, I am so much more, not comfortable is the wrong word, but I am so much more, it's so much more effortless for me to be brutally honest and negative here because it's an hour conversation where we're digesting it. We're bouncing off each other. We've convinced each other we do or do not like something when we start to maybe like it or dislike it. Where in a 60 second video, even for me with my makeup reviews, if I say I put something on it, say I hate it or I, I don't like it. It's not for me. Short form content. Comments are filled with people. Well, I love it. It works for me. OK, calm the fuck down. And that's the thing, but people get that here. Last week, we you were saying we were saying the super gloop, super goop, super goop glow screen. Yeah, people in the of last week were saying they loved it. You know, because you know us, we love that you love it. I yeah. want you to use the product that works yeah. best for you. For me, it wasn't the game <laughs> exactly, and but, that's okay. But in a short form thing, where that's the first time they're coming, they might be coming across you. That's how they react. Yeah. And going back to the 99% of the time we're morons, we were just dying to each other saying like, girl, go fucking figure that we not the every other shirt we posted has us been being fools. Yeah. Uh, talking about blonde tour, uh, like champagne, champagne exploding. exploding. And the one that goes viral is one of the more serious, serious things. moments where it's like, so it's, but it's crazy. And it's like, you know, now that it's over with, and it was a lot, it really was a lot. Cause I don't think people realize when you go that viral, especially something that you are sharing your experience, not an opinion, by the way, <laughs> girl, I mean, just thou hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people stitching you, replying to it, and you had diarrhea. I was I, fine with it because I've gone through this a million times. It was a little different for me because I, whenever I've gone that viral, it's been makeup or comedy. So there is a guy who's with comedy. I'm hiding behind a character. Oh, you don't like me. It's not that you don't like me. You don't like Barbara, like, or whatever the case is. Makeup, same thing, which whatever, I take that with a grain of salt. But this was really was different because it was me looking like me saying how I feel. Yeah. And it was, so I think for you, what, what was your. So, and it was an interesting perspective too, because not only was it, was it you, I really wasn't a part of that moment. <sighs> yeah. Where did I say anything? Two words. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was, I was there. It was a weird thing because I felt like people were being so accusatory and very, very um, combative when they were coming at what we were doing, what we were saying, the conversation we were yeah. having. This is our baby. Girl. And to see the reception, because it was interesting, the fact that the TikTok following has now gone up to 12,000 followers like 13, or 14. Five. Yeah, yeah. I 14. think it was like 14. When yeah, we I got almost checked. like 13,000 followers in two days. Um, I think it was something very interesting too, because I was like, this is our baby. And clearly there's a new audience now that has joined us on the TikTok side of things where maybe those aren't followers of the podcast and, yeah. and subscribers on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. Yes. But there was this thing where I was like, okay, it's not my face being attached to it, but it almost bothered me that people were like attacking you. And yeah. I was like, but how dare you? Because you don't even know what's happening. No. And I was and like, they don't, don't want to. They, they don't, don't want to know. They want to be mad about something. Yeah, because they want to, again, they want to disprove what we're talking about. And I'm like, why don't you back up? Because yes. you don't even have the facts. And I think it was so new for me because I'm like, because I put it into perspective of like a stadium of people where we went to go see Gaga. Yeah. And I said, put that on like how many 3.2 million <sighs> eyes were magnifying that of yeah. like, that was like most seven, football stadiums are like 50,000 seats yeah. times so that by seven, eight, nine oh, times, eight, nine times, Kevin, 3.2 million. I know. I can't even equate that number. 50,000 into a million would be 20, 20 football stadiums make 1 million. So it would be 60. 60 plus football stadiums. Yes, if it's, th yeah, okay. 60 plus football stadiums of having people. an opinion about you. Yeah. yeah. And it's, uh, yeah. I know. Like, I so you were bugging. I, we were like the one day oh, when it was really, it was the Lord. next day. Because by, when we woke up the next day after that, it was, it, it was over a million. It was like at 1.5. And I and texted you. I, you sent me a snap before work and you were like, girl, you're like, I'm bugging out. Like you yeah. were bugging out. I yeah, know. Yeah. Cause my phone was like, I had to turn off notifications. And like, usually I've never had that instance where it's like my personal Instagram. And the day before 
at that dinner, I logged you into the beautiful and bothered. beautiful and bothered Instagram and TikTok. Not that I didn't do that for a reason before. It's just that we never really like we haven't never taken it seriously. In- well, we've never really taken in, shorts yeah. on Instagram and TikTok seriously because again. <sighs> I wonder why. Like, because it's just a volatile place because it's yeah. out of context. Yeah. So we just did it. So the irony of the de- next day is when you're getting blown up from. And I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, great. And then just even seeing that, I had to turn off all the notifications for every single account. I know. I stopped getting notifications for accounts that like, even like my personal Instagram, I had to turn those off because it was linked to yes. the post. So I was like, I can't take this anymore because it was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like I was looking at it was the meme of like Lois from Family Guy looking at the bottle of pills, like yeah, just like yeah. crazy. And I was like, oh, I know, girl, like I wanted to look at my phone and I was so morbidly curious, but I was like, stop. I know because I can't. If this is like the, this is just, the, I mean, we were just yes. talking about it. I came on a year and two weeks ago. Yes. And I think there's something so incredible that I think this is like the the next chapter, yes. like where this is going. It's great. It's wonderful. But I have to learn how to like turn it off. I got because it started to overtake my I couldn't even have dinner that night because <laughs> I was just like yeah. in bed wide eyed. Like I couldn't yeah. even go to sleep because hearing I hearing a hundred hundreds of thousands of voices almost phantom screaming at you. Yeah. And I yeah. was like, this is otherworldly. Like I mama. Yeah. I took my little magnesium little uh, sleep aids and I said, <laughs> and I yeah. said, night, night, I am not taking that. Like, yes. I can't take this seriously because it was like almost making me crazy where I was like, people don't even know who we are and are talking about us yes. like they know us. And yes, we ain't. Well, I even said that. to you, that's the crazy thing. You realize like, because <laughs> even in that point that I made when I said, I was like, oh, people don't hate femininity or people don't hate gay men. They hate femininity. They hate women. In those three sentences, here's the thing. It's so funny because it's like uh, you guys, you obviously, but you guys, the audiences that watch us regularly, you know my personality. You know how hyperbolic we are, how we exaggerate things to make a point or whatever. Out of those three sentences, people hate femininity. They see it as, and hate, okay, let's put a synonym on it. Find femininity weaker. (laughs) Like, sure, okay. The oh, people don't hate gay men. Yes, they do. That was to make the point proceeding and based on the conversation we were having before that and the they hate femininity, they hate women, they hate, they hate women was in our style as like a, to make the lipstick lesbians laugh because I know they know what I mean. I know you know what I mean and yeah. I know you know what I mean. But it's funny and it's like odd in a TikTok audience, it's like, yeah. And again, they don't want to know the context. They want to take it. They want to take what you said, deem it right or wrong, assume the context without any research, which is extremely simple, and one up you and yeah. get their trophy that they were the moral oh. police of that day. And the people stitching the video, seeing our video go viral. Yes. They're like, let me stitch this. This is trending right now. Let me give an opinion. Let me go yep. fucking viral. Let me see if I get traction. Because you want to jump on a, a So a how does that bandwagon. dilute the point they're going to make when they're literally only doing it to capitalize on a trend and you, right. before you woke up that morning, put no thought into that? Because when we had the Lipstick Lesbians coming, we prepared for that conversation for days. Yeah. So, <laughs> and you had a visceral reaction to a TikTok and thought you were morally superior without knowing the context before or after. So sit down. T. <laughs> Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Let's dive into purchase or pass. All right, take it away. All right, so this first one is from Glamlight. This is the Kiss makeup collection. Mm-hmm. Um, so Kiss and Glamlight. Uh, Kiss okay. the band. Band the. Yeah. <laughs> Not Kiss Nails. <laughs> Not Kiss yeah. Nails, girly cop. So in, in the collection, we have a palette, uh, Lick It Up lip <laughs> kit, mascara duo, Kiss Kiss Army mirror, a black and white base, like makeup. A, a black and white base? What does that mean? Like makeup, like foundation, black and white foundation. Oh, okay. To do like the Kiss makeup. Oh, okay. Uh, lenticular <sighs> motion makeup bag. Okay. Is it lenticular? I can't read yeah. that. I think that's what it's called. Okay. And then the PR box is 120, full collection 99 without the PR box. Motion. It's uh, unmittable. This kiss, this kiss. <laughs> That was an I wasn't. I wasn't there with you, and now I am. Now you are. Yeah. Now I'm there. Um, okay, so very weird. Well, now, you know what? 
for to do a random collaboration with a rock band, I kind of get Kiss because they've been doing drag since day one. Yeah, you know, mama. They, they like the cosmeticals. I mean, okay, so the only thing I will say that I feel like... This picture wasn't the marketing because it's too black and white and every I can't tell what's what. Well, girl, because this uh, picture, That is a mess. Yeah. I'm, it, it, is, it is chaotic. <laughs> Chaos. I was trying to do a pun. I know. I, know. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I, I have a problem. So uh-huh. uh, Kiss, you know, the band, black and white, everything, mama. Yes. You know, very, very... Okay, so the palette is like love the color story Ugh. and it's glam light which let's go on record we stan stan glam light yes how does this coincide with kiss yeah like, yeah it's if they didn't already do a black and white grayscale palette yeah with like maybe reds because that was like the chucky palette okay um i would have been more down for that because this color story how does this maybe they were going more rock star yeah i guess and i mean i love the color story yeah and yeah I mean, it's great. Uh, I mean, like, the red lip and everything. Yeah. Okay, I'm not mad at it, but it's like, okay. You know that black and white foundation's gonna be boo-boo. That's gonna be wet well, and girl, wild drugstore ho- spirit girl, Halloween. Mama. Look, I can tell by the tubes. Look at those tubes. I know, girl. That's mama. gonna be wet. That is gonna be spirit Halloween. Mama, the white <laughs> transparent, you've got to layer it 40 times and it's never opaque. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just don't know how I feel overall. I mean, the mascara duo, is that a white mascara or is that a primer? Okay, yeah. Like, Girly pop, I would honestly, I don't know. the only thing purchased the in this is the palette. Yeah. Yeah. Everything else I feel like you could pass on. Yeah. Uh, so because the glam light eyeshadow formulas are stunning. Stunning. So I would definitely, time. yeah, definitely do that. Do the palette. Oh. So these are the new Give uh, Dewy Plum Collagen Lip uh, Collagen Boosting Cheek Tints, and then they have lip tints as well that we talked about. Yeah, so we talked about the if you watched last week's episode, the Sephora sale, we recommended the lip yeah. uh, gels, and we uh, talked about these, but we didn't feature them. Yeah, so we thought we'd talk about them this episode. Yeah, so these are like corresponding shades and the blushes to the lip tints as well. Yes. I am so excited for Girl, this formula I, I'm too. I'm so pissed at myself. I didn't. I was at Sephora. I mean, it was a Sephora Kohl's, so they probably didn't have it. But oh, I'm but these so aren't pissed. out yet. I don't think. Uh, they were when I <gasps> tagged when I made the video last week. They are out on the website. I don't know if the, it's in store. In store, but, you know, um, it takes weeks. Yeah, girl. Because especially so dewy excited. collagen boosting. It what are sounds we talking so great. about. I know. And I love that these have no shimmer in them. I, yes. bro, I'm excited. Give is like doing it. Right I know. Now. I'm Go very give. yeah impressed recently. Me too. I would and I love the these. dark shade that that red. The uh, next one down, and then you can other than I will say the lightest one in this. The way I, I guarantee you the top two shades, excluding the lightest and all three bottom shades, would work on deep skin. Yeah. So it's Agreed. the great balance of colors for yeah. only being six. So I am super excited to try this out. Again, a little pricey for the price tag, but uh, let's just say, you know, uh, purchase with the side of potential, go or potential with side of purchase, go to the store, play with these, but these are worth checking out. Yeah. <sighs> okay. You guys know here how I, we've said it before. Manny, if you're watching, and I know you're not, <laughs> the names, mama. It's always the tongue to lunar versal powder. Like they're always a pun. Lanny, Mora. Lanny, it, it always just, it t- ties my tongue in a knot. Yeah. Like, and this is the Moon Shroom collection. So moons and mushrooms, sure. Okay, so we had, I got, oh, yeah. I got this in PR. We opened it together the other day. We have this palette and then we have three lip glosses. So yeah, we have three glosses, a highlight palette, and then the, Color palette, the eyeshadow yes. palette. So, okay, first thoughts. Um, we opened it up. The highlighting palette uh, was giving Anastasia Glow Kit. Beautiful. Being compared to, let's say, old school Anastasia Glow Kit might not always be a good thing because we all remember Chalky Dalky. Mama, these highlighters Stunning. are breathtaking, smooth, buttery, gorgeous. This highlighting, if uh, I will say my statement, if you get anything from this collection, that highlighting palette is to die for. And I'll get Manny, it's affordable for how much you're getting. You're getting four giant pans for, you know, $36. Lip glosses you opened and were skeptical of, and then you kind of went on a roller coaster journey as you were putting them on because mama shimmer lip glosses just don't do it for me usually <laughs> yeah i just don't like shimmer in a gloss i feel like it feels cheap like claire's it feels like baby's first gloss like, <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah as you're I'm pounding not, that on yeah no there's no shimmer, shimmer in it yeah yeah <laughs> oh hot <laughs> 
<laughs> sleeve on fire. Yeah. So I will say that when I first saw this palette too, Mama, Anastasia subculture. Girl, which of these two things is alike? Because you I were will gagged say me when you put that together. Mats, though I will say I love, I love these like these mats. I love stunning. this color story. I'm into it. I will say forty dollars. I like the color story, but I'm, I love the matte formula. I love the matte formula, but I love the color story too. There's something yeah. about it with the yellows and the mustards and the greens. I love it. Would I like to see more corresponding shades with like the shimmers? Yeah. Yeah. And my two points are, as far as the color story goes, there's oh. too many in the mats that are a little too similar. Agreed. Like those two yellow mustards on top, and, and the then you purples. have a mustardy green are almost identical, are very similar. And then the bottom row, you have two mauve purples. Like, I could have used a little bit more variety in the mats. And Agreed. then I will also say the Lunar Beauty shimmer formula is not my favorite it's more of that foil it's and it not should, really it looks like it would be stunning stunning but you know what it gives mama it gives i have a, a pressed overlay that when i go like this i take it all off and reveal the real formula underneath yeah you know when there's almost a spray overlay on top of, of something a glitter spray yeah that's what it gives and yeah. all that glitter comes off in that first swipe and then you're left with just this foil formula underneath. yeah that's not really like heavy metal yes foils. and for 50 dollars, i like that you're getting as many shades as you're getting yeah but um eh. it's yeah. you know it's i would have preferred an all matte palette Absolutely. That color story. Absolutely. So for me, it's a, it's a, oh, and the lip glosses. So we were skeptical, but the, when you were swatching them, very 90s. I like them. I like them a lot. So yeah. I would say purchase the glosses in the highlighting palette. Yeah. I would purchase the palette okay. for the mattes, but uh, do as you want if you don't want to spend $50. But I think yeah. it's, I think it's a purchase. You can definitely make it work, but <laughs> yeah. I don't want to make anything work for $50. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Uh, I mean, this one was highly requested. Talked about um, it last week. Yep. So these are the new Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Luminous Powder Blushes. So finally, they came out with a powder blush formula. I got these in PR. Like I said to you, I am going to the uh, the event for these um, this upcoming in a couple days. It's so funny because it just shows the power of marketing and messaging. You post these photos showing how glittery and how how shiny they are in pink saying that they're blushes mutiny everybody in the comments on every social media platform mutiny mutiny and let's be real mama you still can use these and this is why for me this is going to be a purchase because this is very similar to uh what we have talked about again og fan if you've seen every episode the house labs pink blush uh, the, yeah. the house labs pink highlighter yeah and how it's like a blush topper i Still, I'm going to make videos with these showing how I'm going to do my regular blush, my matte blush, whatever, and how to either use this if you don't have texture, you can use this the way Miss Selena is, or if you're like me with texture, I'm going to show you how to almost marry this and ombre this in with your blush to give mm -hmm. you that intensified pink glow and highlight to the skin. But it's just the fact that you are calling these a blush, which is is what is so hard to digest for yeah. people. So purchase? Yeah, purchase. Okay. So uh, next up, we have the NARS New Reformulated Talc-Free Blushes. So these are a little bit new and improved. 16-hour mm -hmm. wear, great color payoff, yada, yada. Felt these in store, $34. Okay. A little bit more. I think these are, yeah, these are definitely more expensive than what they were. Okay. I love these blushes really? the formula is stunning the payoff is amazing okay there is no more i put this blush on and it's sheer okay it is full-blown color amazing color payoff <laughs> not me googling homophobia in aruba for you <laughs> that was what thanks, it is. Doll. anyway thank god there's not yeah i'm sure there is <laughs> um <laughs> it's because i've never met you <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're gonna see me and go yeah <gasps> yeah <laughs> <laughs> these are so uh, I, the shades are so stunning. I will say orgasm looks and feels a little bit different now. I like there's a better Good. color payoff, which I'm are the names of these dirty? Some any of the new ones? Oh, girl, mama, there's still deep throat. <laughs> deep throat is still there. Oh, I didn't know if they added any new ones. Uh I there's dominate, which I think was already a <sighs> okay a, an existing shade. I don't know if there's any new ones, but I think there is. Okay, there might be like a new blush shade name, but girl, yeah, you know the names are always wild. I know with Nick Cannon. I love these though. The formula is so 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 stunning. Even like the light pink one, Thrill, is like more of that classic like what Dior wanted to be with their like pink blush that went 
viral because it was a lie. Mm-hmm. They're saying Kylie's makeup artist used it, which never did. That pink blush is so stunning because it's the right tone of like a light pink that can work on so many more skin tones. Okay. Than the Dior one that's like pastel white chalk. <laughs> that okay. looks kind of pink. Yes. So these are so, so beautiful. I purchase immediately. Okay. I'm trying, but my phone Get is these during the sale. What's the matter? I'm trying to compare these to the House Labs in ounces. House Labs, $32.18 ounces. NARS, 34.17. So it's less. <gasps> you get less product. So you get less product. Then it's probably a thinner pan because obviously this is going to be a little wider oh, and bigger shit. than house labs so it's pretty much yeah it's like more, more expensive. expensive than house labs however house labs cut all of their dark bold shades which they had so now you get it in nars so yeah. and they yeah. came out with house labs could have come out swinging like this too like rare beauty like reform redo it and come out and expand your shade range and do it with a bang yeah right now. But Dumb. yeah, these are purchased. If you, you know, yeah. obviously they're more expensive, but it's like he said, it's a beautiful formula. Girl, I should have brought it up. I got the, well, this is the One Size Beauty collab with Wicked for the Wicked movie. Um, Wicked, I feel like you said that weird. Um, so we have an eyeshadow palette, a <laughs> highlighter, a broom. A literal broom. <laughs> a highlighter brush in the shape of a broom. Um, and then they. Is that a highlighter brush? Apparently. That thing was I know. <laughs> and then they made um a until dawn setting spray with glitter in it. Rainbow <gasps> glitter. Okay, I will say the palette I actually really enjoyed. Me too. It looks dull in photos. In photos. In Every person, photo I've so seen beautiful. of this. And I was actually more impressed in person. So there's that. And you are getting two blushes. Um I wasn't gagging for the highlighter. No. Yeah. I was at first, and then a closer look. It's too gold. And when I put it on, it was pretty. And then the longer it sat on my skin, all of the reflect and everything went away. It just got dull. Like, yeah. And for $34, I'm sorry, this setting spray, y'all, I don't know what in God's name we were thinking. I get it. It's gimmicky, whatever. But, like, guys. I'll use it on the hair and body. I am never putting that on my face again. It was. I sprayed it. It was concrete. Those spark. You look like the girl, the meme in the back, in the seat, back like, of the car. <laughs> Literally. With the glitter and purple lipstick all over her and face. And it's rainbow glitter. So it was like, it's not even like it's like silver that it's like chic if you wanted to spray it on. It, it was like, like tacky party city and rainbow. The way that this nozzle sprayed out the product <sighs> was more aggressive than until dawn. It wasn't a fine mist. It was aggressive <laughs> mist. Yes. It was like, I because I'm sure getting the glitter, it would clog that canister. Yes. So I'm sure they had to open that. They had to do something different. They here. either had to make the hole bigger to come out of, or they needed to make the intensity more. Yeah. You know, to fucking make a more pressurized can. It so it was like yeah. rocketing out. Uh, but again, for the hair and the hair and the body, I would just get the Ava NYC queen glitter spray and i just got that and it's amazing it's amazing because it's silver it's like meant for the hair yeah. like this I, is a I, setting spray that <laughs> i don't want to spend 34 dollars on a setting spray that has that much glitter and yeah it was amazing because they even had to like i'm gonna say they already tried to let's say defend this product of why it has glitter in it they already said oh in act two glinda's covered in glitter all over like rainbow glitter what do you mean act two the second of movie the, of the play of the broadway <laughs> play Oh, oh, okay. Weird. And I get it, whatever. I get it right out of the gate. Okay, whatever. Glinda, glitter, cool. But I don't even understand how this is like I face like, eye safe. But no, I would have. Girl, you get not? one of those fucking flex in your eye. But why wouldn't you come out with like a body puff, like glitter body powder? Uh, in That looks like a bubble. Yeah. something. I know. There's so many other ideas I could I would, came up like, with for Wicked. Yeah, like, and I just think maybe like a. The, and you know what that thing said too? I'm going to say it. The quality of the palette's gorgeous. I always I always thought uh, I wish one size kind of put more. I wish they expanded their powder eyeshadows because I really do love them, the color story. And they I had the eye poppers, the getting, glitter. Like, the glitter liquid shimmers were amazing, <gasps> and now they're discontinued. They're so I'm like, them. why wouldn't you come out with, like, imagine a green one in this collection. Oh, and then I a pink know. one and have that like duality of like the like girl, you're better alphabet. off getting just like the glam lights, like a glam lights palette is a very similar formula to one size, but the color stories are going to be great. And I it's was like so excited about this, but it's a pass for me. I agree with you. See, we talked thing. each other out of it. I yeah. know. Yeah. 
All right, girl, it's on my face. This is what Miss Thing is wearing. So it's the Anastasia, the Serum Boosted Skin Tint. So this is $42. I'm getting a mirror. Oh, okay. So this is sheer to light coverage, natural looking, healthy glow, quick, easy application. It's like a twist up like a deodorant. 16 shades. It's so it is a skin tint. So it's flexible where I will agree that like, I do think that you could probably go with a couple shades and like make it work for you. I'm curious to see how this is because I put a setting spray on it that I do not like. <laughs> So I hope it didn't ruin the integrity of this product. This is eating. Girl, it looks unbelievable. And let me get, let, let me, let's not get it twisted. You are someone you like a nice medium coverage. This yeah. is sheer. This is like sheer light coverage. And I barely applied any. Let don't get, don't, don't mix together preference and performance. Just judge performance. Cause it might not be yeah. your taste, but no, because I will I, say girl, maybe this should be your taste because I like it. Fuck you. First of all, because you don't need medium coverage. Your skin is amazing, but you look unbelievable in this. I do like it. It's not. And I have to say guys, cause I'm going to try this next. Cause I'm wearing something different. If this works as well, on me with having oily and combo, not even so much oil and combo. That's a different story, but my, which Kevin doesn't have pores and fine lines. Um, yes, I, I want to let you know, I will let you know how it looks on that and the creasing on my forehead, et cetera, because if it works for that, I think we just found another holy fucking grail for mature skin because yeah. mature skin guys, I can't even explain to you when you even just put this on your hand, it is the most, buttery, gorgeous bomb, bomb, literally not settling, not whatever the lipstick yeah. lesbians. Alexis posted a video talking about this and she put it perfectly, basically saying that there's no water in this and the bomb additive that this has makes it very different than any other stick foundation. And it kind of like I had a light bulb moment and it made me realize I love this so much because of that hydration and creaminess and mm -hmm. gorgeousness. That's why I don't like other stick foundations like the Ilia. Like that's what the last week I was saying the Ilia or any other stick really because they are dry, mama. It's pulling my skin just to get like I almost feel like I want to heat it up with a lighter before I put it on because it's always so dry. And that this bombiness that this has. Holy Lord. It was unbelievable. Like I said, I think we could have a major contender here for mature skin. So purchase and I would purchase. I'm like, I already did. <laughs> I want to go buy. Yeah. So I'm yeah. wearing the color you got. I, I want to go. I want to go buy one. Yeah. And also when, if you do buy this, this little thing, this plastic top that comes with it, don't throw this out. Keep it with it. This really helps make it airtight but I can't even explain to you guys. It's it's stunning. So not only is this a purchase, but you're going to hear a lot more updates about this going forward because I'm going to try it, so on and so forth. So major, major purchase. purchase. Um, okay, so this is a quick one because I am I love these products so much. So these are the Danessa Myricks, the uh, color fix and more like springy shades. Yes. I don't know. There was something so exciting about these and I love this product that it's eye, lip, and cheek. So the black girl face. in the top middle is given Chromatica. Stupid love. <laughs> Yes. Right? With the purple. Yeah. Yes. With the oh. like pinky purple circle around her eye. Oh, 100%. Yeah. That is the chromatica symbol cut off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. I love these so much. I love that they're multi-use and I love the colors. Like I love that there's I know. like... Oh, girl, you know these better be full coverage. Because look at that. Look at the yellow used as a blush. Uh, yellow blush? I Hello? know. <clears throat> yes. And I love that there's like that vampy color. Like I really love the artistry level with these that you can really get so creative. So yes. major purchase. I love these so much and I love that they're matte. Yeah. There's Such only those edition. eight shades. These are the new eight shades. Yeah. Oh, this, this formula has existed. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These are, oh, there's okay. like, oh my God, probably on her website, there's probably at least a hundred shades. Wow, cool. And are they full coverage, full yes, coverage? Mama. Can't wait. She's yeah. amazing. She's such an artist. Yeah, these are absolutely incredible. I love them. Full coverage. They yeah. have shimmer. They have foil finishes, matte finishes, everything. Love. Stunning. Not oily? Like House Labs? Mama, they dry down. Good. They dry down. Oh, I brought over, remember when I had the whole bag of them? Yes. And I brought, the, she has neon ones. There are wow. certain ones that you can't use on the eye, like the neons. Cool. But like even like the look at the red, like usually reds and purples and blues, they yeah. say not for the eye area. Mama, she makes them eye safe. Amazing. Love that. <gasps> oh, next up, Sephora Collection just came out with new bronzers. Love the pan size for Sephora Collection. I feel like they either always do boo-boo too big or boo-boo too small. Yeah. This is a nice in-between. And I love 
how cool tone these are. I know, like an actual balanced bronzer that's yes. not completely orange for lighter skin. And then as we get deeper, they're the appropriate shades. And Mama, you remember, okay, so this is a perfect way. We we hinted at this in another episode. Back in the day before brands like had to make makeup for dark skin because that was a thing. Um, nobody had a contour or bronzer dark enough for deep, deep skin. And yeah. we had to use that Bobby Brown eyeshadow. Yep. That, the color of that Bobby Brown eyeshadow was that exact color of that yeah. darkest one. Remember it was that re- like terracotta yes. brown yeah. and good for them for making this much of a thing. I will like, I should say jump. I will say between number three, let's call it, and number four, there could be a quite shade. the jump. <laughs> yeah. And I also think we could probably go one step darker for a bronzer. Exactly. Because I feel like that last one looks a little cool toned. Yes. For so super, I feel like super dark. We, we need, need something yeah. a little bit more red. Yes. Which I feel like the, the Sephora collection bronzers never really went there, but I feel like we should go there. Yeah. <laughs> so I would love to see more of a shade expansion, but I love these at the, they are $16. I know. And so they're going to be amazing. how much off. 30%, 30% off, off for the Usually sale. Usually all the sales now, uh, Sephora Collection is 30%, which I yeah. love. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's for every tier, which is great. So this is a purchase. I would definitely go swatch these. Same. It looks buttery. So yeah. I love that. Yeah. <gasps> okay, girl. We have it somewhere. Did I knock it over? Oh, maybe. Oh, it's it might be in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I got this in PR. This is the Elf Power Grip Dewy Setting Spray. V- very easy because we tried this ourselves not that dewy <laughs> like i will say it, it it gave a little bit of a sheen but not like half magic by no. any means that's and you're gonna setting. call it or the, dewy or the coconut elf yeah how are you gonna have the the same brand have a dewy coconut setting spray and then you're gonna say this one is dewy as well i know mama it's not, not it yeah and it's a by phase so you shake it up and i felt like when i went to go spray it, it was like hard to do yes. so i was like okay so clearly this is struggling to go through this <laughs> nozzle yeah does nothing. And then I did the wear we test. Did I put eye- a blush. Yes. So I put a whole blush, a neon pink blush, sprayed it down, let it dry for at least 10 minutes. Went to go wipe it when it was fully dry. Came right off. Gone. Yeah. So get lost. Absolute pass. This is not doing anything. Especially when they have good setting sprays. Yeah. But again, we got to capitalize on the power grip. Now we're going to power grip mascara, power grip eyeliner, power grip douche. <laughs> yeah. Screaming. Power, grip. power wash. <laughs> 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 Love. Okay. Oh, oh. Hey, you, you guys. Guys. <laughs> Girl, guys, look at this video. Okay, y'all. I don't know if Morphe is like rebranding, but they came out with these three palettes in a gold, a silver, and a rose, mm-hmm. rose pinky gold. rose gold. Um, I got it in PR and I, you know, I haven't looked at a Morphe palette in about four years and been like, okay, this is going to be a a lot of bullshit because we've said it millions of times. We always say we love the mattes and we never like the shimmer formulas. Uh They're always so dull in all like the Morphe 350. And we used to buy the Morphe 350 as bridal makeup artists because we would just want the mattes and then I would do my own shimmers like separate. Oh God, how many times did we have the liquid steel shadows in our bridal kit? The separate pots, the ColourPop Super Shocks, like uh, separate around. I open this. And you got here today, and I giddy run up to you to show you these, and you bought all three I bought already. All three. These are, yeah, like guys, next level. The matte has always been stunning. Look at these shimmer shades. When I tell you the one in the middle, even dry is blinding. And then I didn't realize until I was watching videos, it's the that middle shade with that gorgeous pressing, which I honestly wish they were all that. But I will say all the other ones in this palette, the shimmers are even stepped up from what they've ever been with Morphe. Um, if you wet the brush with like a little setting spray like normal, mama, we're talking almost like a, a, a liquid foil. Yeah. It, on a different, I am very, this is the first thing i've been impressed by from morphe in as long as i can remember yeah and these are 14 dollars a piece so a dollar more than their other Girl, nine pan palettes i know a dollar, a dollar for this more. formula look at that stunning I know. so and I, we were saying out of all the color stories the silver is our favorite 
The by silver far. spoke to me. Yes. By far. That was the first one I had in my hands. And then I saw the rose gold and I said, yes. And then yeah. the gold one caught me a day later. And I was like, yeah. okay, I kind of want all three to like, yes. play because I don't love gold on me for what I, I think I just associated Shocking. with a li- it looking cheap. Yeah. On my, like, I hate gold yeah. eyeshadow on me. I think it looks so awful. Anything I mean when you're on your knees is going to make you look cheap. <laughs> I love gold on me. Yeah, but well, I have to say, what would you recommend? Like, like we I saying, said, it makes you look cheap. <laughs> yeah. We wish the one in the center of the pink was more pink because it's actually it's like bronze. Or, it's like orangey. Like I know. Bronze. And I'm like, so okay, that's for why me. I think the you got to look at the gold and the pinks and see if this color mm-hmm. story speaks to you. But both of our favorite is the silver. Yeah, by far. Absolute purchase. These are unbelievable. And I hope this speaks volumes. Even Morphe on their website, like redid the M is different. Like I'm kind of hoping we're getting a rebrand a with different people, different you yeah, because the foundation the foundation i know the new m i hope this there's a different the team because the old morphe team gotta go like this because they're going well, in a good direction because mama former brands i know mama, they were i don't think they're playing around i think they had to say what is going to reinvent us and yes here we go totally totally here for it <gasps> girls all right last but not least Huda Beauty finally listened and made the iconic unbelievable easy bake setting powder fragrance free I've been dying to tell you this. I got an email about this like two and a half weeks ago and I couldn't say anything. Guys, completely fragrance free. So we are always, that is by far one of, if not my favorite setting powder of all time. And then they put the fragrance from the powder in a perfume. It's beautiful. And it's beautiful. And it smells better almost in a perfume because with the powder, it was like, again, I don't, because I don't want that. Dare I say it was jarring? (laughs) Yes, you should. Damn. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, <laughs> I, it's Yes, it's beautiful. And such a great concept. And like the whole marketing was like someone stole the fragrance out of the powder and put it in. We bottled it kind of a thing. But the moral of the story is this powder is finally fragrance free. So if you've been waiting for that as long as I yeah. have. And in the photo, there's only rejoice. four shades. So I wonder, like, are they going to have the fragrance ones if you already if you don't mind it and then the coinciding like shades just fragrance free like i wonder if they're going to fully transition to this be to be yep. fragrance free which i don't yes who, who care if it performs the same i don't care but like make all of the shades fragrance free because if it's just these four top sellers that's going to piss me off oh the very darkest coffee cake yeah and blondie which is like a medium shade and then Cupcake are all not in the fragrance free. Maybe it's still being developed for those shades, but I, I don't know so. why you wouldn't wait to launch everything together. Yeah. But who knows? But either way, I mean, I would take it as a sign. I, I hope that they're going to just transition away the fragrance powder and make all every shade fragrance, all free, fragrance free and free. call it a day because yeah. that's why would you not? So, yeah, but exactly. definitely, I mean, purchase. We've said to purchase this 50 million times, especially if it's fragrance free. Alrighty, y'all. Thank you so much for watching a brand new episode of Beautiful and Bothered. Make sure to follow us over on TikTok and Instagram and show us love because uh, we need it over there. (laughs) Um, Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want your video episode one day early. Please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify because that helps new people find the pod. I will also say... uh, I got stuff designed for it, yada, yada. But I think I would say in the next couple of weeks, we're really going to start unrolling Patreon stuff. So uh, we want to hear from you guys. Leave down, comments down below of the kinds of content you want to see on Patreon, whether that be bonus, like after hours, us talking here, makeup videos and tutorials like we used to do on my channel, uh, anything and everything, any idea. There's no silly answers, so leave it down below. Uh, yeah, guys. Oh, thank you. Tootsie Lou. Oh, yeah, tootsie Lou. <laughs> yeah. Root toot Rudy. Uh, wherever you are, we hope you are happy, safe, and healthy. And remember... You are beautiful. Bye. Bye. Hi, fire truck. It's tart. <laughs> Girl, should we blow out this candle? Yeah. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> well, let's dive into purchase or pass, Mama, when we get, when, right up, tonight at 11. I didn't know how to end that. <laughs> Do you know where your children are? Girl, the comments are still rolling and I needed to stop. You gotta shut your notifications off, girl. I thought I did. I feel like some of them sneak in, girl. <laughs> they sneak in. the back door. And they just get in there and just... Girl, we're recording. (laughs) Oh, yay. (laughs) 